I pastor that church. Pastor that church. Nobody's coming. Something tells me Bamba go up there and take those speakers down. Because every time you go visiting, they tell you, Pastor, we heard your message. <laughs> it was a beautiful message. <laughs> but nobody coming. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm going to take those speakers down. I got up early in the morning to go up on the church to take the speakers down. And the Lord says, you leave the speakers right there. Because it made sense to me. If I, if I leave the speakers there, they won't come to church. If I take it down, they'll come. The Lord says, leave those speakers there. And I pastored that church for seven years, going through a lot of pressure. Trying to have young people, trying to, to have Sunday school. I gained a little bit, but not that much for the work that I was putting in that church. Seven years. I got a relief at the end of seven years. Not, not really a relief. They sent me to pastor another church. That church had a problem. <laughs> I pastored there for two years and things started going well. They changed me to another church. Like they put me in these churches that wasn't doing well. So I can build it up. I'm trying my best. <coughs> and back at that first church, Church of Church, church of, of the Nazarene in Kumuto, where I passed for seven years. There were times I didn't have any money to, to buy anything because they're not giving you much in the ministry. People would try to bring you a little chicken, this one would bring you a little provision. You know, and you're, you're, you're struggling. And I couldn't understand. So we were doing a course, a missionary course in a book. And it spoke about this missionary in, in, in Africa that had a problem like mine. Struggling to build a church, struggling with the family, struggling with the children. And he came out in his kitchen one morning and he saw a parrot on the windowsill in his kitchen. He went and take the parrot, and when you look at the feet of the parrot, there's a slip, a note, offering him a reward for whoever get that, that pigeon and bring it back, an offer for reward. And that missionary took that, took that chicken, or took that pigeon, back to the owner and got a lot of money because the man was rich. From that day, every time I get up and go in my kitchen, <laughs> I'm looking for the parrot. And I'm telling my wife, where is the parrot? I am praying and asking God to please send me a parrot. When I left that church, I never got the parrot. To make a long story short, and this is the part I want you to listen and listen to carefully, particularly those of you who are in ministry. I'm pastoring and I'm looking for the power. No power. But at, at the end of 10 years ministering in the district of the Church of the Nazarene, never saw that power. Three pastorates, three, three places I, I, I pastored, three churches, no power. My children were growing, and I wanted to give them a, 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 a broader opportunity. I'm praying and asking God to open a way for me to go to America because I like to bring them to America so they can just blossom, spread. And God did open the way for me. 19, what was it? 1978. No, two. 68. 
1968, I brought my children here to, to, to America. And I can't go into all, all that's a different, that's another story. My wife died after we were married for 14 years. She died in 19... She, she, she died in 1974. And I have a whole other history to tell you how the Lord led me to this woman here after my wife died. I was praying, visiting churches, looking for a wife. And God did not open the door. I'm going to all the, all the crusades. I'm going to every anniversary. Nobody, all these beautiful women in the church. None of them. One day, I'm making it short, one day, I'm coming down. I was in the church here at the time, assistant pastor. And one day I'm coming down the step, and as I face to go down the step, this young lady is coming up, and our eyes met, and the Lord says, That's the woman. So you were going all over the community, all over the <laughs> looking for a wife. And she was right here in Bethlehem. She was right here. She was in college preparing for the, preparing for her, her future. She wanted to be a nurse or something. And I met her. I only have to give you a short version because I want to send you home. But we got married two years after my wife had passed away, 1976. And she has been a mother to my Children, my four children. She gave up all of that to marry a man that has nothing but three children to give her. Four children to give her. One has gone to glory. And what a beautiful job she has done with those children. But the, the best is yet. To come. Give me 10 minutes. I want to give you the best part of this, this history or this testimony. It's the most important part. I went back to Trinidad to visit 10 years after. 10 years after I left Trinidad, I went. But I was pastoring me and all that. You know where I'm going, right? Yeah. I went to visit. They didn't know I was coming. I just wanted to surprise them. And I didn't know nothing. So I rented a car, went up to my first church, the one I had most trouble with, the one that I was struggling with for seven years. I said, let me go and visit them, see how they're doing. When I pulled up in front of the church, I was thrown. I couldn't believe my eyes. The house I was living in behind the church, that was torn down. The little church that I had, which was built like a tabernacle, it was still there. But behind that church, an awesome big church, a humongous church. And I am standing up it and I'm looking at it. And I can't believe my eyes. I see, I know it 10 years, but that much? <laughs> they took me up. I went down to the back, went up the stairs of the church. When I opened, when I walked in the door, that place was packed. Jam packed. Big. The church is bigger than headquarters church in Fort of Spain. Big church. I go on the platform and I sit down next to the pastor. And I'm seeing the faces of all those people who tell me they come in and never came. <laughs> those people who tell me, Pastor, you preach a good message, but never came. Young people I struggled with. 
to try and build a young people department. Didn't have much, but they were a full choir of them. They are doing ushering. The, the church is a family people. And I am spelled mom. The pastor reached out, and this is the part I want you to get. The pastor reached out and he touched me. He said, Brahma, you are looking at the fruit of your labor. Yes. I go down. I go down and start to weep. Weep for joy. And in the midst of the meeting, the weeping, the Lord said to me, Pramble, you thought you were laboring in vain. You were looking for a parrot from the window. Pramble, I was your parrot. The pastor asked me to say a few words and I couldn't even speak. I was so filled. God spoke to me in that way. He says, I am your parent. Those seven years that you were struggling, were you ever sick? Did you ever see a hospital? Did you ever visit a doctor's office? My children were strong and healthy. As anybody's child, one of the most healthiest bunch of children was my children. God bless me because I made him my power. I share that with you because I don't know what you're going through. We have ministers here, pastors of churches, ministry, and I want to say to you this evening, make Jesus your power. Make Jesus your power. He says, I will provide, I'll supply all that you need according to my riches and glory. To Christ Jesus. Jesus didn't die on that cross in vain. He didn't die in vain. That is not just a religious thing. It's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have that relationship, I don't care what you're going through. Look to your power. The Lord Jesus Christ. The one who is able to supply what? All your needs. And all means all. We focus on the spiritual needs, we focus on the material needs, we focus on every need, but we do not focus on the spiritual needs. And that's where the problem is. When God said that He needs all your needs, he means all your needs. He means all your needs. You need patience. You need faith in God. You need trust and confidence. You need faith. And you're going to have to pass through some things in order to get those needs filled. You, don't, you can't get it filled from the bank. I don't feel that I don't care how much money you got. <laughs> Cannot fulfill those spiritual needs in your life and my life that is so important. Don't put the emphasis on the wrong things. Put the emphasis on Jesus. Give him honor. Give him glory. And give him praise. I love the Lord tonight. I'm not perfect. If you ask my wife, she'll let you know I'm not perfect. But I love the Lord. 
and I, I try to sue them the best my ability. And let me share this with you and I'm going to close. We are getting this service together. And when it came to the offering section of the service, it says, okay, we're going to take an offering. And one of my minister friends are sharing with me and I tell him, I don't want the emphasis to be on the offering tonight. Because it's not about the offering, it's about Jesus. Yeah. We put the offering in the program and I told them to take it off. Because I, I don't want to feel that I have to depend. I know God provides, and I know He bless. So those of you who saw offering on the program and it's taken off, because I didn't want to have any part to do with that. I wanted this service to be surrendered to the Lord and not focus on the offering, how much offering we pick up. No. Whatever you give to me from the Lord, it's okay. And if you have nothing to give, it's still okay because he's my parrot. He's my parrot. We are getting ready to go downstairs and I ask my daughter Rose to sing with me a very, very wonderful hymn of mine. I love that hymn. It's called, I'd Rather Have Jesus. So Ruth will sing with me and I want you to listen to the words of that song because it's it's, 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 it's a blessing. Put Jesus first in your life.
My wife will assist me. Um, I know when I reach a certain time of the day, I'm very tired and I can say nonsense. So she has to make sure that I don't say any nonsense. <laughs> that the Lord has given to me it was seven years ago. Yeah, consecration. Yeah, consecration. Consecrate me, Lord, to do thy perfect will. Consecrate me, Lord, with thy spirit filled. Cleanse me from every sin, my selfishness and pride. Melt me and make me so that I, so that you will be glorified. Open wide the door of my heart. Let your love to others flow as I share the gospel tidings in a way that they will know. Keep me humble at the feet, dear Lord, as you guide me day by day, for I know that you are the truth, the life, and you are the only way. No other one can teach me, Lord, the things I need to know. No other name on which to call, for you have told me so. You are Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. You are my Savior, Redeemer, my soon coming King and Friend. Satan tried to beguile me, Lord, but on you I will rely. For wisdom, strength, and courage, and in your cliff I will abide. You are the source I turn when I, my earthen vessel fails. For precious treasures you place inside does help me to prevail. Eternal, immortal, the only wise God I know. No power on earth can match your crimson flow. Lord, why I rely on you? That's why I rely on you, Lord. You are everything to me. You are my yesterday, today, tomorrow, and eternity. Come, blessed Holy Spirit. My heart you have appeared, for you guided and directed me to Christ, my sovereign head. Now I surrender to his ruling, my opinions step aside. Thank you for your kindness, for I am fully satisfied. I'm going to ask my wife to read the rest here, please. And, um, because I think she can make a better statement in the closing. Reaching, I am still reaching for that higher ground. Not satisfied with mediocre, for in Christ, new growth I found. Through his grace, he draws me nearer, still nearer he wants me to be. A light that draws me to him till I reach the heavenly. Anointed at your altar, I'm fully sanctified. Your oil of joy and gladness poured upon me as I cried. Thank you, Lord, and praise your blessed holy name. Yes, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for my life is not be the same. Till I stand with you in glory and a new image I'll shine. When I hear you say, dear father, this one is also mine. What blessed hope you give me as I walk into your light. Unbroken, sweet communion and fellowship in your sight. Every tongue shall confess as they fall before your throne. Even those who fail to surrender now, to take you as their own. So Lord, I consecrate my all to thee and make my election sure. I see my love, my faith, and my trust in you. 
now and forevermore.
So except the Lord built the house, it must already be architecture in heaven for you to build it down here. And so except the Lord has already consecrated him, I cannot consecrate him down here. When David was chosen to be king, and all the other brothers appeared before David, before David got there, Jesse's son David. Jesse would have got all of his sons and forgot about David who was in the field. And each of his sons appeared to Samuel. But the oil would not flow on the other sons. It was designated to flow on that son that God had chosen already selected in the heavens. I anointed the mother of this house and the first lady with my finger in the sign of the cross. But because of the great anointing that must rest upon the leadership, the leader of this house, it's more than just a little dab will do you. I need to make sure that God's anointing and blessing is still on him. So I want to see if the oil will flow from this bottle. It's flowing all upon him. You remember when the oil was poured in the Bible on Aaron's beard? It flowed from the crown of his head down his shoulders all the way to his feet. I'm going to consecrate him for perpetual and continued service. And I heard the brother say that he does not necessarily retire at any, but he gets rekindled, he gets refired. So I'm praying for refiring. I'm going to anoint him and consecrate him, which simply means that he be set aside, sanctified. He be consecrated for continual special work of the Lord for however long God will choose to do so. When I think of him, I think of David, as David wrote in Psalms 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of his own. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate both day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the river, and bringeth forth fruit, in his season, and his leaf shall not wither. And this is the part that I like. Because not only does it go down to the children, but to the grandchildren, and even to the fourth generation. And whatsoever he doeth, and whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. And that prosperity goes down to the first generation, the second generation, the third generation. And so I consecrate them right now, continuing for the work of the ministry to the Lord shall save otherwise. And this body of believers shall support him. So Father, we bless you and we thank you for 80 long years. And if you should say so in trio, in triplets, as Moses' life was 40, 40, 40. So we're looking for the next 40 years of whatever you would have them to do. And so I re-consecrate them for what you've already done, the consecration that's already been consummated in the heavenly. Oh God, I renew it. Oh, glory. I renew it right now. In the name of Jesus. Let your anointing continue to flow yes. from the crown of his head yes. to the very soul earth, God, of his feet. 
Use a mighty like you never used before. And this great woman of God that stands and sits you right alongside of her, God. Keep them bond together. We thank you for the wonderful work that she's done in raising the children of God. And we praise you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. amen. Is there anyone in this house that desires to feel that there's a call of God on you, in particular for this ministry, but not even so for this ministry? If you feel that you're being appointed and called of God this evening, I would invite you to come forward that you might be anointed at this time. If there's anyone at all, I'm going to anoint myself because I'm, I'm, I'm just a baby. I just made 70 in, in January. So I wanted to another kid. And, and, and so when the Bible says, and David's cup runneth over, so I, I poured the oil on him so that some would get on me. Because God doesn't waste anything. And so as this cup runs over, I want the overflow, God help me tonight, to flow from him to me that God will bless me to do another 10 years. And I'm trusting in the living God that he shows me. I, I mentioned to someone, and I'm, I'm finishing for real, I mentioned to someone that Two weeks ago, I was up skiing and, and, and snow tubing. And the person said to me, you mean you're still alive after 70? <laughs> and so for those of you thinking that you, know, you just rolled over and died when you just 70, he proved that life still continues, even at 80. So you watch me next year, I'll be skiing next year, I'll be snow tubing next year with all the young people from my church. Those of you who are 65 and 66, you can roll over and die if you want. <laughs> and, and feel that you can't do nothing, I'll still be out there. <laughs> My hand is filled with one. I'm going to anoint this sister here. I know that she has a powerful praise and worship and dance and ministry. God, I can teach you, ah, glory, I can teach you right now that your anointing, oh God, will flow from leadership from Pastor Bramble down to this daughter right here, oh God. May she continue to stay humble at the feet, oh God, of you and the leadership of this house. Anoint, oh God, in such a way that she would dance as she's never danced before. Bless her coming and her going. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone standing. I believe I can give the benediction. Am I in order? Am I in order? Can I give the benediction? Am I in order, Pastor Bramble? What you said? Thank you all for coming this evening. Thank you for being in the house. Amen. I thank our sister for coming. Now, I know he said that the altar was important, but somehow put something in his hand. All right? Bless him somehow. And refreshments are downstairs. I, I apologize I can't say, but maybe something's still going on at my church. I don't know. But I got to get back. Thank our wonderful musicians uh, tonight, all of you. Everybody that ministered, we thank God for you taking time out. Because what goes around, what comes around, goes around. And so because you're here for this 80th, get ready. You might be 40, but you got 40 more to go. Okay? Because what goes around, comes around. Get ready for 80 years. Father, we bless you. We thank you tonight that we brought in that wrong little brother to be here this evening with this young man of 80 years old. And if you speak, if you say so, God, if you look in his direction, if you just breathe on oh God, he will easily do another for you. And so because we walk by faith and not by sight, I praise you and thank you in advance for 40 more years. In Jesus' name we pray as you take us from this building, from this place, but never ever from your presence. In Jesus' name, we pronounce now the benefits 
of the benediction in Jesus' name. And everybody said hallelujah.